Before we get started on our yellow brehim, I want to show you guys four different techniques on coloring. We will be using crayons, just regular old crayons. Crayola markers. Color pencils. And my personal favorite, Faber-Castell markers. These are some really nice markers that illustrators use. Personally, one of my absolute favorites. I use these all the time. You guys have no idea how lucky you are to have these. The first technique I'm going to show you is layering with crayons. Here we have our colors. We have green, white. Yep, we're going to use white. Blue. I know it looks black, but it's actually blue. And yellow. When you are layering, I recommend starting with your darkest color and gradually making it lighter as you go. So we're going to start with the dark and color with this all the way in. Notice how I keep my strokes close together and there's no white showing. That's what you want to do. We're not going to do it like this. This is what you want to do, side to side, close together. All right, so I have a nice even coat of blue. No white showing through. The next step is going to be to go in by white and make it lighter. Notice how when you do that, it makes it a nice baby blue. Artists use white for blending and to make their colors lighter when it comes to crayons. Same thing with color pencils. Well, it depends on the brand. There are these pencils called Prismacolor pencils, which are very nice and easy to blend. This technique I'm showing you right now with the crayons, a little bit trickier to do with the color pencils if they're Crayola. All right. So now you have a nice baby blue. You want to use your fingers you can to make it smoother all right so the next step after you do this is going to be to put in your green i'm going to use light green and yellow next let's speed this up a little bit Alright, as you can see, we have a layer of green, blue, white, and some yellow. Not a lot of yellow, just a little bit. More so up, up here than down here. But it, as you probably noticed, there is also a texture here. I really do not like that texture, but it can't be helped. The table here is a hot mess. we got lots of paint here, markers, and all of this brings up texture. You guys will not have to worry about that at school because the tables are really nice and smooth. So this is, once again, layering with crayons. You use your white to blend colors. If you don't want to use white, you don't have to. Just remember, start off with the darkest color and then move on to the lightest color. So let's say you want to do, I don't know, purple. You start with a dark purple and then you can do a light pink on top. That's what I did here. This was dark purple, then light pink on top. So the next technique I'm teaching you guys is crayons and markers. This should be somewhat familiar. Remember, you draw your detail first in pencil, then you outline with your marker, just like so. The reason we do this first is because the colors, depending on the marker, it might be very muddy. The markers we have at school, if you draw with them on top of the crayons, they're very muddy and ugly looking. You don't want to have that. So this is why you outline first with the marker and then you color inside the lines with the crayons. I know it's only October, but I am so ready for Christmas. I love Christmas, the Christmas songs, decorations, everything about Christmas, especially Christmas movies. So that's why I'm doing the Christmas colors. All right, now we're gonna speed up and color. All right, 
So the next one we have is crayons and Faber-Castell markers. Now this is a bit tricky. It just depends on the color you use. These are called dual tip markers because they're double sided. You have green on one side and purple on the other. This is purple. I don't know why it looks to me. It looks brown in the video, but it's actually purple, like a nice magenta purple. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do a nice coloring of green over here. Let's speed this up some. All right. We are going to be using dual tip markers. They're called that because they're both double sided. You have purple on one side. Yes, it's purple. I, know, I don't know why. To me, it looks brown in the video. But this is purple. Then we have green on the other side right here. Most markers you cannot color on top of your crayons with. Okay. I did this with the exact same marker over here. I don't know why it's not okay here, but over here, it looks kind of muddy. So it just depends. I think it's a texture thing. I think the table's not agreeing with this. But usually these markers you can color on top of with the crayons. So here we have the green. I'm going to go ahead and try and do that. Just be very careful when you're using these. They're fine tip, which means you have to press down on them very gently. Otherwise you ruin them. They're not meant to color with. You don't do this. No, that's not what you do. If you want to do texture, you can do texture like so. Just add some lines using these markers. And then we can get a different color. Let's see. What colors do I use? Let's use light green. And then you do the same texture again over it. This will be a really cool technique to add to your a la brie hit. Like a little pattern. Gives it texture. some purple. I love purple and green. They go so well together because they're secondary colors. So any secondary colors really go well together. For instance, you'll notice the Joker. His colors are green, purple, and orange. He has an orange vest. DC knew what they were doing. These are all your secondary colors. All right, enough about that. We're gonna try and do this. Let's see if it works. See, yes, it works. Okay, it just depends on the color you use. Okay, so this works just fine. See how it looks nice and rich? Most markers you can't do that with. If you color on top of crayons, it looks really funny. Let's do some dots. And notice how I made a pattern. We have the dotted, then we have kind of like lines, a pattern line, dot, then lines, dot, and lines. So that's how we use the paper Castell markers. Now we're going to move on to colored pencils and paper Castell markers. This is personally my favorite. I love using this in my own artwork. Let me see if I can show you guys an example. That's cool. I'll show you an example. It's cool. For the next technique, I'm going to be using Faber Castell markers and color pencils. I'm going to be making a sort of grass texture. This is how I do my grass in my illustrations. I use Faber Castell markers and color pencils. The technique I'm showing you here is called mixed media. Media, also known as medium, is a different art tools. So here we have a marker. A marker will be an example of a medium. We have color pencils. This is also a medium. So I am using mixed media okay so i already did like a nice thin coat of color pencil you can kind of see that i'm not gonna do the whole thing that will take too much time we're doing this technique right here so now i got my green marker i'm gonna go in just add some curved lines it doesn't have to be exact some big some small some together some far away something like this just do it very quickly then i'm gonna go back with my green the nice, thing, the nice thing about these markers, they're kind of like paint. They're not really paint, but they're more liquidly than some other markers. And so if we go back in, if it's still wet, I think it's too dry right now. 
but let's say we make it nice and wet. Go back in with the pencil and you push it around. And by pushing it around, you can push the ink. See how I did that? The ink's coming out. It gives it a nice texture like grass. So that's what we're gonna do. Push the ink around. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but this is what it looks like. What is that? 